Hey everyone, this is Robert Keynes with GoldSilverPros.com. It is Thursday, September 4th, 2020. And I wanted to focus today on the amazing announcement that came out yesterday where uh, JP Morgan was fined a billion dollars, that's billion with a B, for manipulating both the treasury and the precious metals futures markets and what impact that could have on gold. And <clears throat> if you look at my site, I have a new article up called uh, What JP Morgan's $1 billion Fine for Manipulating Metals Could Mean for Gold. And we get into the details of that. I just wanted to show first the article here at Bloomberg, JP Morgan to pay a record $1 billion to settle market manipulation charges report says, this is on September 23rd, 2020 by Ben Wink. So JP Morgan is set to pay almost $1 billion to settle charges from U.S. regulars of spoofing in precious metals and the treasury markets. So of course, JP Morgan doesn't just manipulate metals, they manipulate a lot of different things. Uh, the payment would resolve investigations by the Justice Department, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the nearly $1 billion sum would be a record spoofing related settlement and would more closely resemble past penalties for other forms of market manipulation. So spoofing is when they put large traders in and pull them back at the last minute on uh, the futures market before they go through, but that spooks the market. And all, all of the previous spoofing cases were related to shorting the market, not to going long or trying to raise the price, but to but trying to short the price. So the article doesn't confirm that that's what JP Morgan was doing here, but I assume that's what they were when I read the article because that's what all the previous spoofing cases were about, including Scotia. And so I'm gonna get into a lot of detail about why I think JP Morgan was shorting the market to keep the price down. Uh, and we'll get into that. It says here, JP Morgan is said to pay nearly 1 billion to settle with US authorities investigating whether the bank manipulated the metals and treasuries market, Bloomberg reported on Wednesday. Uh, this sum would be a record for spoofing related settlements and could be announced as soon as this week, sources from here told Bloomberg. So again, the, the finite details have not come out, but basically it's known they're about to get fined a lot of money. Um, and, I, and I go on the article to talk about the scope of the price manipulation. We're going to use September 23rd's CME data here as an example. There was just a massive volume on September 23rd in gold. You see 411,000 down here, 558 total volume contracts, and I multiplied that out. If you multiply that by a 100 ounce contract, then you get 41,155,800 ounces of gold. And I wanted to see, okay, how much gold is that compared to world production? Well, according to the World Gold Council, gold mining adds 2,500 to 3,000 tons of gold to world supply each year. 3,000 tons is roughly equal to 96 million ounces of gold that would add a uh, gain added to the world stocks per year. So in a single day this week on September 23rd, the futures market traded 42% of yearly gold production. This is a single day on the December's futures contract. 42% of the entire world production of gold on an annual basis. So going to uh, the World Gold Council here, they have a nice little article on how much gold has been mined. So this is where we got the 2,500 to 3,000 tons on a yearly basis. And overall, we have 197,576 tons mined overall throughout history that we've been able to track. Um, so wanted to give some scale to basically what was going on. So in this chart from uh, Gold Charts or Us, Nick Laird's site, he has to see me gold exposure. And I'm showing here that the vast majority of trade in this green section are the futures contracts, so the paper. And down here, uh, the register, this uh, yellow is the actual gold trade. The red is not the actual gold settlement. That's eligible ounces that are just stored on the COMEX in warehouse storage. So really it's all this massive green against this yellow only. And you can see there's a lot more green or a lot more paper futures trading than there is actual delivery, which is this yellow only or this gold color. And the red really has nothing to do with futures market trading. So I go on to calculate uh, what this could uh, mean in terms of how much was traded on September 23rd. So remember we had going back to September 23rd data, we had this many contracts and that equals 42% of yearly production in gold. So we're going to multiply all that times the gold price per ounce early this morning is 1858. When I wrote the article now, I think it's 1868, but roughly 
$76.47 billion worth of gold traded on a single day on September 23rd. That is a lot. And that's not how much gets produced on a given day. That's just how much traded. So I wanted to examine the total volume for 2020. So I took another chart from Nick Laird's site and we drew kind of a mean line here across the bottom of volume. And it looks like a, an average dating back to last October, about 360,000 contracts of 100 ounce gold, which would give you 36 million ounces are traded daily in paper form. That's a lot. Remember, there's only, um, going back up here, there is only uh, 3,000 tons, which is roughly 96 million ounces. So on a daily basis, we're trading 36 million ounces. That's about a third of annual gold production on a daily basis on the COMEX is getting traded in volume. Uh, how much did the price manipulation affect the market? If you look at what JP Morgan paid, they paid a billion dollars, but you're talking about every three days, the entire world production of gold turns over. So is a billion dollars really enough of a penalty to offset how much manipulation went, uh, took place and how much it affected the gold prices. I'm saying no, but we don't know uh, how the, the regulators determine that here in these paragraphs. We don't know how they determine the $1 billion number, but there's a couple of ways that we can look at this and try to determine you know, where that $1 billion falls in terms of uh, how the market trades. So the COMEX futures market trades uh, the largest input, what determines the gold prices is the COMEX futures market. So the COMEX futures market feeds into the LBMA spot price and the LBMA spot price is determined by that. And that's quoted by an article I have up here. So that means that the futures trade affects the gold price for every single thing that is traded on a daily basis, every jewelry purchase. Um, and we can see down here the numbers from uh, the World Gold Council. Jewelry amounts to 92,000 tons of total gold, private investment, 42,000 tons, official holdings, 33,000 tons, other just regular holdings, 28,900 tons. So all of this gold here uh, that, that we've ever mined, whether it be jewelry form, private investment, official holdings like central banks and so on and so forth, uh, other, other, other investment, even the stuff that's used in building computers and electronics, because gold does is used a little bit industrial every year. All of that got affected by this price manipulation. So let's do the, some calculations. Per the World Gold Council, 197,576 tons have been mined up through 2019. Again, right here on their site, 197,576, and we broke it down as to what they are here. The current value of all that gold at $1,858 $1 an ounce, which is when I wrote this this morning, is $11.8 trillion. So JP Morgan affects the gold market of $11.8 trillion, which is the value of all the gold ever mined at current prices as of today, and they only get slapped with a fine of a billion dollars. There's a billion dollar fine, and remember that billion dollars was split between the spoofing and the treasury market and the precious metals market. It wasn't just the metals market, it was the treasury market also. So you have to assume part of that one billion went to treasuries. Is it 50-50? We don't know, that's not in the story. But even if it's 70-30, you're looking at $700 you know, million dollars, for affecting $11.8 trillion market. Now, how can I say that we have to look at all the gold ever mined? Because gold, unlike silver, copper, aluminum, so on and so forth, is not used up in industry. Even a lot of the gold that's used in industry, like electronics, computers, and things, are, is recovered in scraps. And most of the gold, the vast majority of gold ever mined is still above ground. So people that are holding it for investment or the central banks that are holding it on their balance sheets or uh, people holding it in jewelry, all that gold ever mined gets affected by the spoofing that JP Morgan did. And that's $11.8 trillion at today's prices amount of gold ever mined that, that people are holding onto in one form or another, whether it be investment or as uh, capital reserves or whatever the case may be. And again, the fine was only a billion dollars. Is that really enough? I don't believe so. So we examine that in the article. Uh, I go on to talk about fiscal gold and exchange becoming scarce. I really want you guys to read this article because I put a ton of screenshots in here about how uh, the gold is becoming scarce. I know you guys have seen that in videos, but there's a lot here. And I'm gonna relate it back to the Scotia and the JP Morgan spoofing schemes. As you recall, recently Scotia got fined 127.8 million, which was previously the biggest fine and now JP Morgan a billion. We don't know how much of that billion is related to the metals, but even if you divide 50-50, it's more than what Scotia paid, 127.8 million. So JP Morgan is now the largest fine ever for, for spoofing and manipulating the prices down in the precious metals markets. 
So we're going to look at the, the depository warehouse gold stocks. Um, I've showed you guys this chart before. So this is on the COMEX. All of this light green here is eligible, meaning it's not set up for futures contracts. It's not liquid. Uh, the reason it's not liquid is because the CME group came out and, and gave a memo here on April 9, 2020, and they kind of hit it under a position limit memo. Position limits are how many uh, positions each trader can take uh, you know, in the market when they're trading futures. Uh, so, the, so the title, this is not talking about inventories, but buried in this are a couple of inventory bombshells. So I'm going to go over this again for people who haven't seen it. Here, back down on the second page, it says the exchange determined at this time to base its estimates of deliverable supply gold, that means gold deliverable for futures contracts, on eligible and registered stock. So going back to the screenshot on eligible, the light green and registered, the vast majority of the gold traditionally was ineligible, meaning not eligible for deliveries. It has to be registered, has to have a warrant uh, tied to it. Uh, sorry, going back to the memo. So they decide to base assessment on both of the categories, but now they're backing out in this memo. On eligible and registered stock story to exchange approved depositories. The exchange recognizes that gold is used in an investment vehicle and asks as some gold stock may be held as a long-term investment. How much is held as a long-term investment? Well, all of this green is the long-term investment. That's been the vast majority of gold dating back basically to the tech crisis, uh, just about 20 years when, when people started you know, putting gold into eligible, meaning it's on the COMEX warehouses you know, books, it's, it's in the depository, but it has nothing to do with the actual futures trade because the person that that gold is titled to hasn't put it for the futures trade. And as you can see over time, all this gold that used to be free trade on the market has been building up in these uh, eligible categories, meaning people are taking it off and not making it liquid. I mean, it's clear in the chart. I don't, I don't know what other conclusion you could come to by looking at the history of this. So going back to the memo, uh, while surveys conducted indicate no clear consensus as to how much gold is dedicated to long-term investments, I'm right here in the middle of the paragraph. What that means is they surveyed the depositories and said, how much can you tell us for sure of that eligible gold stock that you're holding for other people titled in other people's names can we bring back to the exchange for futures contracts and there was no consensus meaning they had no criteria they had no way to determine that it says the exchange in an effort to represent the conservative deliverable supply that may be readily available for delivery made the determination at this time to discount from its deliverable supply 50 percent so in other words going back to this chart 50 percent of all this eligible gold here the the exchange is admitting we probably should not count on that but again, they don't have a criteria for any of this. And what I'm saying is you can't, you shouldn't definitively account for any of this. Any of this vast bulk amount of gold sitting on the exchange in eligible category, you should not count on any of it because exchange cannot force people to give up their eligible gold and put it in futures market. It doesn't work that way. The title owner of that gold has to say, I want to put it for a futures exchange. So the exchange cannot guarantee any of this can be traded against a futures contract. And they're trying to soften this by one, putting this in a document that doesn't say anything about inventories. So uh, it's very hard to find. It's buried within a document that really is supposed to be about something else. And they're only discounting 50%. So they're trying to soften the blow. But in reality, they can't tell you any of this is deliverable. They don't own it. It's not theirs. It's being stored at one of their depositories, but it has nothing to do with the futures contract and they have no title to it. It's titled in somebody else's name. And that, that person or entity that owns that has to say, okay, I want to, Let's put a warrant on it and let's put it out for futures contract delivery. So it says the exchange made a later date determined not to discount such stock to recognize the discount levels more than less 50%, meaning we could go up or down and basically admitting they don't know that any of that is deliverable. So I go on to talk about that in the article. So I, I say, how do I come to the conclusion warehouse gold is not completely liquid? Well, first you look at this chart and second, you look at that admission by the CME group. So, and, and I put this screenshot here talking about all this in the article. So what are the implications of the manipulation? Well, you have to look at the commitment of traders report and you can see the swap dealers, which are the bullion banks. So it's going to be people like JP Morgan, Scotia, which are bullion banks and all those bullion banks that deal on the market are net short, almost 50% of all the shorts on the market, 45.6 as of September 15, 2020, according to the commitment of traders report from the CFTC. And it's got links here. You can, open this link and, and get to the actual report. I've got all the links in here for you guys if you want to come study it. Almost all of the short, 264,269 contracts as of September 15, 2020 of 100 ounce gold. So be, um, good Lord, that's a lot, 26 million uh, ounces short by the swap dealers 
uh, that's what that's how they're bringing the price down, right? They're not only are they spoofing, but they're putting all the short on the market uh, to keep the price down, and they're doing the vast majority of it. And here's another interesting chart from Nick Laird's site, site for gold and silver showing these bullion banks are basically shorting. They're the four and eight largest trader in both gold and silver. And this is the amount of days of production of gold and silver you need to cover those shorts. So 150 days in silver, 80 days in gold. So if the bullion banks get caught with all these shorts and can't deliver metal, it would take 80 days of them buying the entire global production of gold in order to make good on these contracts. That's how much they're short. That's an astounding number. So what was basically going on? So the rest of the article, I go on to talk about the, the, the scheme and what it means. Scotia Mikata was fined $127.8 million for spoofing, meaning they're putting in trades the last minute, taking them off before they actually execute. But that has the effect of bringing the price down. That's why they're getting fined for it. JP Morgan, same thing. In this case, you see the registered and eligible stocks on Scotia as they're doing this. The stocks are being taken off the market. They're not, they're not being put in the, the just the eligible stock category. They're actually taking it off the market. Look at, look at the, the amount of gold they held in 2011 when gold was at its peak to now when they got fined. So they were taking uh, all of the gold off the market as they were spoofing the price and manipulating the price down. Okay, what does that mean? Well, each of the bullion banks has both long and shorts. So if you go to uh, the COT report, let's go back up here to our link. The bullion banks have both shorts and longs. So longs have 81,024. I don't know if you guys can see that, but right here, 81,024 long contracts, 264 short. By having more short contracts, you bring the price down. And by spoofing these trades where you don't actually put in the trade, but you spoof them, you bring the price down and then you take delivery with these contracts. And the people that can take delivery, anybody with a long that stands for delivery. So the bullion banks were doing it. Who's the next highest long? The other reportables. Look at this, 27.3%. The other portals actually have more longs, 27.3%, than do um, the swap deal to 14%. So these other reportables are rich individuals, funds, things like that, are taking the gold off the market. They're taking delivery. You can see it here in the COT report. So what is happening is the elite are using the bullion banks to short and spoof the price down, short the futures market and spoof the price down. And they're taking the gold through the delivery right off of the exchange in their funds, in their trust, and in their, their individual accounts. And the bullion banks are taking some for themselves as well. And you can clearly see that in the data. And that's basically how that works. And you can see it coming off of Scotia Mikata's gold stocks. So all of their stockpile in their, in their uh, depository, uh, their COMEX depository was being taken out of the, completely out of the depository, not only put into eligible category, which is vault of gold, it's taking it out, like it's gone. Like all these wealthy individuals uh, are basically taking delivery of this gold through Scotia. And, and taking it off. And that's what the data basically tells you. I mean, again, I don't have the transactional data, but I just look at what the overall aggregate data tells me. And that's what that tells me. If you're going from 5 million ounces down to about 500,000 ounces, one tenth of what you held at its peak in 2011 in basically nine years, and, you, and you've been fined 127 million for spoofing, which brings down the price, that means you're taking gold off at under market price off of the deposit right, off of the market. There, there's no other conclusion you could possibly logically get to. I don't, I don't know what else you could say about it. It's right here in the data. I, it's, it's clear as damn day. I mean, I don't know what else to say. So I wanted to look at JP Morgan. So JP Morgan got fined a billion dollars more than Scotia, the 127.8 million or something like that. So the, the, the situation at JP Morgan is a little bit different. So another chart here from Gold Charts or Us, Nick Laird's site. So go use that site if you want to see these charts. It's a great site. You can see that they were kind of doing the same thing. As the, the price of gold started to fall, the registered inventories you can see here and here were taken off. So they were paper thin and, and all the gold sat in their eligible stocks, meaning not available for delivery up until 2020. So it's very interesting. It, the same thing happened in JP Morgan, although on a smaller scale, they were taking the gold and sticking it eligible and also taking it off the exchange. You can see that in the daily metals reports where it goes to eligible and it falls off eligible. So, so that was happening is being taken off the exchange, although less dramatically than Scotia. But it's interesting to see what happened here in 2020. Right before JP Morgan got fined, there was a massive influx into eligible gold um, uh, in, into their uh, uh, depository. And what we've been seeing, <clears throat> if you go to the metal delivery reports, 
we've been seeing a lot of gold tracks posted for deliver uh, gold contracts posted for delivery excuse me a little bit dry mouth so here's just the september data but if we go back to the annual data let's go to the year to date uh, gold delivery i'm going to scroll down to the bottom here of gold futures and i'm going to give you the numbers for the year and it's long because there's a lot of accounts here the gold futures look at how this is the total amount of delivery we see Last it started last December, 14,761 contracts of 100 ounce gold. Then it started ramping up February, 31,000 in April, another 10 in May, 55,000 in June, 49,000 in August. So leading up to the billion dollar fine at JP Morgan, massive amounts of gold were being taken off the exchange. Or being, or were, I'm sorry, yeah, we're being taken off of the futures delivery and put into eligible. And at about that same time, here's the July, here's June, July. Right when you, okay, go back to when this was happening on the on the metals. You see this 31,000 in April, 55,000 in June. Look at what happens at that exact time in 2020 to JP Morgan's eligible gold inventories. Who do you think was taking delivery a lot of this gold? JP Morgan. They got it off the market before they got fined for spoofing. You, you knock the price down, you get the gold cheap, you take it off the market. The only question is how long has this been going on? This chart only goes back to 2011. Has it been going on for 20, 30? I mean, who knows? You know, instead of it going to eligible 20 years ago, you just took it off the market because there was only registered. There was only either it was for delivery or it wasn't. Uh, but the eligible really tells a tale of how much was taken off. And this explosion right before they got fined, when all of these deliveries were happening, when they, they spiked up starting in April, what happens to JP Morgan's hoard on their depository account? All this light green, which is not eligible for delivery. That's why the CME group came back and said they're going to cut 50%. Because if you look at the charts, all of this gold is standing in the account. It's not going to the future. It's not going against futures contracts. Not only JP Morgan, also Scotia Makata. Not only is Scotia Makata not putting it towards this dark green, which is uh, registered gold. Look at it from 2018 to 2019, there's almost zero, but they're actually yanking it straight off the market. And again, going back to the commitment traders report, you know, who's doing this? So let's go back to the commitment traders report. It is the swap dealers and the wealthy individuals. 27.3% of the longs, wealthy individuals, 14% the swap dealers. Now, to be fair, there's also 28.8% managed money longs but managed monies uh, are like hedge funds and uh, those types, types of entities. And they're known not to take the, the gold and the silver. They don't want it. And they say that publicly and there's not a lot of deliveries. Everybody that covers precious metals knows that. I've talked to a lot of people. It's like they're not the managed money. It's the wealthy individuals, the elites, quote unquote, the elites of society and the bullion banks. And again, you can see it in the data. Uh, Scotia probably was doing a lot for the elites where they just pulled it straight out of Comex, probably put it into a separate depository. And JP Morgan just said, right before we get fined, we're going to spike all of our deliveries and stick it in our warehouse account to where the CME group during April, when JP Morgan starts doing this, think about the timing of this. In April, we had this spike up from 2914 gold deliveries in March to 31666. And on April 9th, the CME group basically says, oh yeah, by the way, we can't count on eligible stocks. Okay, 50% of eligible gold, we, get, we got to discount that. Why? Because it's going into these accounts and they're not letting go of it. They're spoofing to get the price down. Again, billion dollar fine, billion. Scotia Makata, $127 million fine. Where is it going? Gold's going off the exchange or gold's sitting in the COMEX account. Eventually, I think that'll come off the exchange. It's not going to futures contract. The COMEX is being robbed, okay? The COMEX is being robbed. We know it's being robbed because authorities say it's being robbed. That's why the fines are coming out. Now, why does JP Morgan take a billion now? If you go back to the numbers, uh, I think JP Morgan has taken their medicine now on purpose. I think they worked out a deal on purpose because go back to the numbers. When you're trading 42% on a single day in the market, of paper contracts of the yearly product, uh, production of gold. One, you can get a lot of gold off the market because you stand for delivery only a fraction of those paper contracts on your longs and you're gonna get a crap ton of gold off the market because you're trading so much paper. And it almost doesn't matter how much paper you throw out there. You just keep throwing it out there 
to affect the price. You spoof it to, to hammer the price down. And then you stand for as much delivery as you can get away with and as, as much as the, the shorts on the other side of short will give you. And 42% on a daily basis. And, and this has been going on. Look at this chart of volume. This has been going on 36 million ounces, about a third on average every day of world annual production of gold being traded. That's how it works. So it's all right here in the article. Uh, and I think JP Morgan's taking their billion dollar charge because when you can run this much paper, $76 billion a day of paper, a large portion of that's JP Morgan, was Scotia, was, were these other billion banks. You can afford a billion dollar fine, especially when you're holding all the damn gold. Look who's holding the gold. The, the, a big old chunk of gold being held on the depository is JP Morgan. And Scotia, they just said, hell, let's just take it off. And they did dump a little here at the end, and that's because they got fined. So they dumped it here to satisfy existing contracts. They had to do that. So Scotia had to give up some of their gold. Obviously, they had to get give it back to the exchange because from here to here, there was an increase of about, looks like about 600,000 ounces. So Scotia gets fined $127 million and have to give basically 600,000 ounces back to the exchange for delivery to satisfy their, the, the, the long standing for delivery on their specific contracts. But the rest of it, they ran away with. Again, another slap on the wrist. I think they're taking their penalties because I think they know when the whole thing blows up. If they've made these agreements and they've settled already with the Justice Department and with the CFTC, when it all comes down and the scope and the scale of this is realized, and I put scope and scale here in the article, $11.8 trillion of gold affected where they're trading $76 billion a day or every day, about one third of all the gold ever produced in a year. A billion dollars is not much, but when you get that billion dollar fine, the deal that they're probably gonna cut, and again, we don't have details of this in the article. It doesn't say this in the article, but what I'm surmising is JP Morgan agreed to this to pay the billion with probably some sort of immunity clause to where when the stuff comes down and all the gold and all the, the COMEX defaults and there's no more delivery, because all the gold's been taken off. JP Morgan said, you already find us. And, you know, we, yes, we affected $11.8 trillion of existing above ground gold, but we paid our billion. Okay. You can't find us a trillion now. You can't find us 500 billion, you know, or a hundred billion based on when everybody in the market figures out the scale of this scheme of this scam, they paid their billion. They, they paid their penalty and they probably have some sort of thing that says, hey, you can't, you know, double jeopardy. You can't come back to us again. We've got this agreement in place. I think that's what's happening. I think that's why JP Morgan took it this time. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, of course, again, it's not in the report, but why, why else would you do it? If you're JP Morgan, you could fight this out in court forever with the lawyers. I think what they did is they capitulated, paid the billion. Because think about it, the billions across two markets, precious metal and treasury. Maybe it's only 500 million for, for precious metal, 604, we don't know. To affect an $11.8 trillion market in which they made money on all this paper. And so you're gonna ask me, Rob, how'd they make money on all this paper? If they're trading 76 point some billion dollars a day of paper, remember 76.47 billion dollars of paper that traded on September 23rd alone, how do they make money on that? Well, I'm gonna show you, they do it on options. So there's options data here in CME Group 2. So I'm actually going to bring up the spreadsheet. The options is a way that, uh, just like stock options, you can control like 100 ounces of gold for a really small price. Uh, you don't have, you know, and the, the only time in which you would have to actually uh, settle, and when you settle on an option, you just settle for the price of the contract you bought. It's a derivative. You don't actually have to settle for the metal, so you don't have to deliver the metal. So the options can be manipulated even more. Um, the options can be, can be you, you can take almost an unlimited amount of options um, within, I'm sure their position limits, but for example, on the long side, the options are 193,000 uh, options of 100 ounce gold. So that's basically, was that 19 million ounces of gold on the options on the long side um, increased today or yesterday, I'm sorry, by 4,589. And on the short side, we're going to get to the short side here. This is the short side. There's 135,000. So there's more longs in the market than shorts. On the options, the options are cheaper. A lot more people play it. So you're going to have a lot more of the managed money coming in playing that. 
And it doesn't necessarily involve delivery of the goal, but it's a way to make money off the price. So let's say JP Morgan is spoofing the price down. They're going to take puts. A put is basically where you're betting the price of something's going to go down. So let's look at the data. Let's look at the gold price now. The gold price was uh, about 1868 the time I started the video. So anything uh, above 18 or $70 is in the money on a put. So as the gold price falls, more of these levels that I've got highlighted here are going to be in the money. And this is for October. Okay, so about a month. We got about a month for these to, to finish in the money. So you see 10,000 contracts at 1850 bucks. You see 1,500 contracts at 1825. You see 6,200 contracts at 1800. And this is the daily change to this column. You see all these contracts being added, 2,868 contracts at 1850. In other words, people can smell the fact that gold's falling and they're taking these, these puts because as the price falls, these puts all start to come in the money. And there's 9,000 of these puts. That's about something like seven or 8% of all the puts in October are at this price of 1850. But you add all these numbers, 1578 here, 1226 here at 1840, 6,223 at 1800. Looking at the numbers, the market is betting heavily that, that gold price falls. And if it falls and you can spoof the price, you make money on the option. So JP Morgan is not just making money by taking delivery of the metal. Let's go back and, and reset this, this, this whole situation. So JP Morgan and Scotia spoof, they bring the price down. They take the metal off the market. This is the overall COMEX, 20 million ounces of gold overall sitting in eligible. JP Morgan has half of that. They're obviously the biggest player in gold, 10 million. So they get the gold off the market at a cheap price. And then they, they also go over it by spoofing, by shorting all these futures contracts. And then as the price falls, they make money in all these options. All their options come into the money and then they, the, the person on the other side of this, this put basically loses money. And on the call side, if we look at the calls, that's the long side. Uh, these are in the money. $1,900 calls are in the, I'm sorry. Um, as the price goes up, these come in the money. So look at the changes. As the gold price falls, look at the changes on the calls. Lots of calls here. So the longs basically are being taken for a ride, essentially, is what that means. There's more longs and shorts in the options. The shorts, if, they, if you can spoof the market and bring the price down, you're going to win on the puts and you're going to lose on the options. So as the price comes down, more of these, these uh, call options or the longs are going to lose money. So that's kind of the new data I want to bring to you was the options market. The options market basically is a way to profit off of this spoofing, this manipulation of the futures market. And again, you can get that data off of the CME Group website. I've always talked about the, the volume of the futures market. If you go down, you can look at option types. And there's October, there's also November. I haven't even covered November. I was just looking at October. But near term in the next month, uh, all of those shorts, 135,000 uh, short uh, puts for October could start to more and more of them come into the money as that price falls. And the 198,000, more of them are going to lose their money because they're long. They need the price to rise. Will it rise? I don't know. JP Morgan took a billion dollar hit uh, September 23rd. Scotia did it, you know, not too long ago. Some of the bullion banks are starting to fall. You're starting to see these fines come out. Another sign that we may be at the end of the game. I think we're at the end of the game in terms of physical being available, because I showed you the charts where most of it's in eligible or in Scotia's case, it's being taken off. I've showed you daily delivery reports for the last two months, especially from Brinks where it's been taken off. And if they do have to source gold or silver for new contracts, it's brought off market. So there's not a lot of gold liquidity. We've shown you the CME Group's admission that they don't know how much of that eligible is liquid. But given the fact that major fines are being paid, I think these, these players are now exiting. A lot of the bullion banks are going to exit. Their short trades are going to stop spoofing. And the gold and silver price are going to be allowed to rise. And the people that hold the majority of it, which are going to be the bullion banks and these wealthy individuals taking it off the market, are going to get rich. And there's going to be short squeezes, I think, are going on right now. You see that with a spot delivery. You know, I've talked many times about how uh, at the end of August, there were 3,070 gold contracts were rolling over for the September contract. But we've had more than that in deliveries. Let's go back to the delivery report here real quick. We go back to the delivery report 
uh, gold on the COMEX, we're now up to 4,709 4, actual deliveries. So at the beginning of the month, there were only 3,070 contracts, but we've had 4,709 deliveries. That means that people are doing spot contracts. They're coming in with a contract, very short term dated and getting the gold right off. They're doing it in silver too. So that, that appears to, to indicate a rush on gold and silver on the COMEX. And you see uh, on the 22nd, we had 298. So there's a little bit of a spike here in deliveries. It kind of had calmed down and then it was spiked back up again. So more people coming in again to get that gold and silver off the market. And who is it going to? Well, let's look at the charts. JP Morgan's got half the gold. Let's go down to JP Morgan's chart again. Sorry for the scroll guys. JP Morgan's got half the gold sitting in their account. Who actually owns it and what they're gonna do with it? How much is JP Morgan's versus the client? We don't know, but it's sitting in their depository. And Scotia Mikata, they got it off basically before they got fined. Look at this. Since 2011, they, they, they knew what they were doing. They got it off. And maybe a lot of this went to wealthy individuals and now it's titled to somebody else. And there, there's nothing the exchange or the regulars can do to get that gold back. They can find them $127 million for Scotia or a billion for JP Morgan Chase for, for the scam, but they're never going to get the gold back. It's titled in somebody else's name under legitimate trade, which we know is not legitimate, but, but they're not going to get the gold back. So the great gold and silver heist has happened. And I think that means, you know, it, there's going to be big action going on in the squeeze in gold and silver. I wanted to show you guys something. Let me see if I can get over here. So going back to volume, October now has healthy open interest, 60,254 contracts. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's not the 430,000 in December, but 60,000 is not bad. If we have a lot of deliveries in October, that could continue to squeeze the market in gold. Uh, if even a fraction of these stand for delivery. I mean, right now in September, we only have 4,000 contracts. What if we had 10 of the 60 stand for delivery? And again, look at the yearly chart. We have a big month followed by small month, big month followed by small month. Another big month, I think, coming October, small month, November, big month, December. That's been the pattern. Look, big month, small month, bigger month, small month, really big month, bigger small month, really big month, small month, another really big month, small month, October big month deliveries I'm expecting, December big month deliveries. And again, you can see that with the contracts. There's very little in November. I mean, there's a contract for November. It's not the active when people are trading December. So again, big month here, big month there in deliveries, We're getting the rest of the gold and silver off. Okay, more evidence. And I think they're making money on the options too. That's how they can make money with a falling gold price. They spoof it, they put it in their puts and the options. They make money on that pure derivative trade. They make, they pull the gold off the market uh, at cheap prices and they make money that way. That's how they can make money, but you know, two ways on the trade or both sides of the trade because getting the physical gold with their longs, they're spoofing short and take money in the options trade. That's how they make all the money. And that's where you get a billion dollar fine. It doesn't matter. Why? Because the scale, again, go back. I'm, I'm reminding you of the scale. 11.8 trillion dollar market. Okay. 11.8 trillion dollar market to get in the gold cheap and they trade 76.47 billion dollars a day in the futures market alone and then the options on top of that they're making money just on the on the price where they don't deal with the physical but they make money on the price and every time that price falls they make more money how much do they make well let's look at the puts go back to this again go look at the puts sorry that was november 135,000 puts open of 100 ounce gold it's 13 million ounces of gold in just paper exposure not going to be a physical delivery there, but they're going to make prices. They're going to make money as that price falls. And a lot of these are below price. So a lot of these stand to gain money. 10,000 contracts. If it hits 1850, if it goes down to 1825, another 1578 plus 1226 plus 419 plus 492, 6,000, they get down to 1800. Remember what I said on the cup and handle formation in gold? Cup and handle, which is a bullish indicator for gold, it would have to come down to at least 1800 to maybe mid 1700s to, to finish that handle on the cup. Well, guess how many contracts are here between the current price of about 1870 and 1800? Look at all these. That's why I think the price could fall. Look at the way that they're playing the options market to make money. They're going to make money all the way down. And now they got the physical off. When that next massive leg of the bull market comes and we get to two and three and $4,000 gold, they're going to make money on the physical because they've got it off the market. 
that's what's going on. So I wanted to add that options research for you to show you that additional angle of another way that they can make money and talk about the fine and talk about why they're accepting the fine now, because I think all the Boeing banks are going to start going more long. They've got most of what they think the physical is off the market. They're taking their fines for spoofing. They don't care anymore. They're not going to take the fine. They're going to fight that with their lawyers until they get enough gold off the market and made enough money that they don't care. They'll take that billion dollar fine. So drop in the bucket compared to what the gold is going to be worth. That $11.8 trillion worth of gold is 1858. What if it goes to $3,000 now? How many trillions did the Boeing banks and the wealthy individuals who have taken the gold and silver off the market make when gold goes to $3,000 now, it's $4,000 now, it's $5,000 now. Again, you can see it in the data. That's how the game is played. That is how the game is played. And, the, and now that it's all coming to the forefront, these fines are becoming more frequent and bigger and much more uh, visible. That's why we're at the end game. Why would they allow it to be visible if they're only halfway through the game? If they only got half the gold and silver, they're, they're not going to allow that to get public. They're not, they're not going to get fined for their spoofing. They're going to fight it. I think we're near the end game. That's another piece of information showing us that's where we are. So again, another long video here. Really want to explain how that worked, bring in some additional information with the spoofing fines, with the options, kind of give you guys the full picture of what's going on in these markets and how it works. Till next time, this is Rob Keens with goldsilverpros.com.